the accolade of bird of the year congratulations was uh, given to you well not you personally no, no, mate, but no, <laughs> to the bat and um you know that caused a ruckus um and many many people uh, talked about this give us a bit of feedback of of uh of how you've been have you been inundated by calls people arguing with you on the phone that it's not a bird etc cetera, etc cetera? i wouldn't say I've, I've received death threats but i have uh, received some hate mail um from some very angry birders uh saying that by entering the bat it's uh it's uh destroying all the goodwill with all the other birds and uh all the conservation work and I'm destroying conservation in New Zealand and everything. So it's, uh, it's been, um, yeah, but then suddenly there's a win on, uh, Monday. I had calls from NBC and BBC and all sorts of, you know, international news coverage and even some Russian news services have been interested in bats now. So it's, it's all over the place and that's been really surprising. Yeah, it's great though because you know any any news about this lovely country of ours is good news. I hope for <laughs> when it comes to doing work for our native species. Um, so let's get underway. Um, so we're really going to put the uh, the record straight for a start, and we're just going to remind those who have decided to join us just why the bat is uh, perfect for winning Bird of the Year. Go figure. Away you go, Ben. Give us a bit of uh, a rundown on the bat. Yeah, I want to set the record straight that a bat is not a bird. A bat is a mammal. And um, we, you know, but we only have two native species of bats here. Uh, the short-tailed bat on the left and the long-tailed bat. Um, so bat of the year would be really, really boring. Uh, it would just be, is it you or is it me? It's just one or the other. And it would be a really boring competition. So... Um, we thought we better get back to basics. Uh, bats in Aotearoa, there's um, the, the only land mammals, like I said, um, the pika pika topoto, or the short tail bat, and the pika pika toroa, the long tail bat. Um, this map is a bit old. It shows some of the um, places where long tail bats are in the blue and um, short tail bats are in the red, but there's been some updates to that since this map's been made. Uh, but the greater short-tailed bat uh, went extinct in the 1950s due to a huge rat plague. Um, so we know that these um, uh, bats are very sensitive to um, our introduced predators. And but that's because they've, they've been here for, well, the uh, short-tailed bat's been here for as long as the New Zealand has existed. It fell off the edge of uh, Gondwana land um, millions and millions of years ago. And the long-tailed bat, um, only arrived here just a million years ago. And um, <laughs> so they've been here a long time, but then really not got any um, protection from uh, predators. Uh, so they're very, very vulnerable to um, the, the, our introduced predators like the rats, stoats, possums, things like that. Uh, the lesser short tail bat is the one that's really um, unusual because it crawls on the ground. Um, it can fly, it just chooses to spend a lot of time on the ground. And the long-tailed bat is completely in the air all the time, uh, catching little tiny insects like mosquitoes and moths, which is really useful for us as well. So um, we decided to go up against the bird of the year. And uh, a biology teacher um, called Peter emailed me and said, uh, hey, I'm wanting to put a... Uh, um, Pika Pika Toro up against the birds in the bird of the year. And I was like, I'm right behind you, mate. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll support you a hundred percent, but, um, uh, I've tried many times and, and forest and bird have always shut me down. So, um, but he said, I've got a good argument. I, I think we can get through. So he managed to convince forest and bird that we should go up against these, these birds. And as you can see from this little meme picture here, um, the birders were not impressed. Um, they thought that uh, having a bat in the competition was was not a good look. Yeah. Uh, so we, um, yeah, it was it was really to try and raise awareness for our our little picker picker um, against because the bird of the year is such a really good platform for um, just having those conversations about uh, birds in New Zealand, and, and we could have that same conversation about bats, which we did. Um, with lots and lots of people, which is 
the good thing because most New Zealanders don't even know we have bats. So to have bats as part of the conversation was the only aim of having um, Pekka Pekka in Bird of the Year. And that's all we thought we were going to get. Um, but the main thing we wanted to do is try and that, raise that awareness about um, New Zealand ecology as a whole. And um, the same issues happen um, for birds as, as bats. So those um, introduced mammalian predators are just as um, damaging to the bats as the birds. So we thought that having bats in the competition uh, would just mean that we could um, have those conversations about uh, bats and, and, and birds and, and see what we could do to, to raise awareness about the general New Zealand ecology. But the response was, yeah, outstanding. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't know that, it was, you know, they say that memes win bird of the year and there were certainly a lot of memes flying around, both uh, uh, negative and positive, but I think the uh, negative ones um, definitely fanned the flames and got people really racked up about um, fighting for the underdog. The, the, <laughs> for, uh, and I think New Zealanders really like the underdog, so it certainly ruffled a few feathers, but um, that's that's what we wanted to do. And I was really impressed with the artistic responses from New Zealanders. Um, it was just impressive that people were so inspired by um, the Pika Pika and, and the Bird of the Year that they've designed all sorts of different artwork out there. And um, the Kakariki in particular um, campaign uh, produced an alliance with the Pika Pika. And um, there was some really great mm -hmm. artwork with um, Kakariki and Pika Pika together, which was really cool to see because these are both um, uh, whole nesters as well. So, um, yeah, it was really good to, to see that um, some of those alliances coming through, like the Kiwi and the Ruru and everything, um, trying to, to support the, the Pika Pika as well, which is great. And it really shot off um, in this last week. It's just people love to, to hear about the unusual. And I've, you know, I've had calls from all sorts of news agencies, both in New Zealand and across the world. And I think we can really say that we've really achieved what we wanted to do is to raise the, that awareness about, about bats and um, to get that bird of the year and by winning it by over 3,000 votes even, was just uh, an amazing achievement for this this little bat that is really the underdog in, this, uh, in both the conservation world and this competition um, because bats don't seem to get as much funding or research or um, conservation efforts a as some of our birds, as our high-profile birds do. Um, so it was really great to see that both the local media and international media getting, getting, seeing that there's profiling this bat. So, I mean, my, uh, I have a little Google alert so of how, when uh, long tail bats are mentioned in, in the news and it's just been going crazy. Uh, so it's just been great to see that um, we've really raised that profile for the long tail bat and, and that was the whole aim for it. But what I really wanted this talk to talk about was to talk about steps for protecting our Pika Pika that everyone can do. Um, and that's why uh, Pika Pika Toro was chosen over the Pika Pika Topoto is that um, the long tail bat is more likely to be seen um, in near our cities like Tamaki Makoro in Auckland and Kirikiriroa Hamilton in Rotorua. Um, so we'd like to we, we know that we live alongside our bats um, in, in, our, in our urban areas. So we wanted to make sure that people knew about them. And we want to know that people, everyday people can do a lot to help our, our bats. So the first of my five steps for uh, Pika Pika protection is uh, protecting old trees. Um, even those exotic trees that don't seem that important. Uh, gum, macrocarpa, pines, willows are all really um, good bat habitat because the bats um, are either inside the tree, if it's a hollowed out tree, 
or up under the bark because they like to roost in together, um, snug in really closely. So um, these gum trees here on the picture might not seem so important, but they could be really, really important um, bat habitat. So we're really wanting people to make sure that they check old trees for, for bats before they fell them. Is there anything to look out for when just on that? Is there any way of being able to have an idea of a tree you're about to fell that it may, because they're little, aren't they? They're so small. They're so small. They're about the size of your thumb um, and about the wingspan of your hand. So they, they, they really fit under the loose bark. And so there's really not really most obvious. If they're in large numbers, you might see a little bit of guano coming out, a little bit of bat poo. Um, but um, most of the time you can't uh, tell. And, and a lot of the time these uh, long tail bats especially will move roost trees every couple of days. So even if you think you've found a roost tree, it, it, they move on pretty fast. And we think it's because of parasite buildup and things like that, that they want to make sure that they're not um, having too much in that roost so they'll move on. So um, there's not really an obvious sign, but if you know there's bats in the area, um, or if you think there's bats in the area and can grab a bat detector, which I'll talk about later, um, well, hopefully we can, um, yeah, make sure that we can check for uh, bats beforehand. And does the, um, just while well, there's some questions coming through just on this mm. topic of number one, and um, are you able to describe what the guano sort of looks like to the uh, uh, to, the, to us? Is there is any way to distinguish it from um, a, a bird? It's like a, a a black sticky paste. Um, ah, okay, yeah. like a marmite, veggie mite. Kind of, kind of, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But um, a few people were trying to train up uh, detector dogs to try and sniff out bats, and but the the hard thing is is to source a good supply of bat guano. Uh, so. Um, it, because these bats are so rare, um, it's often hard to find these bats um, poo as well. So um, even training up a detector dog has been has been challenging. Yeah, Jude just um, sent in a good idea. She just said, uh, next time, um, if you've got a picture of uh, a bat poo, um, and you can put it in the in the presentation. Um, but I would imagine that there is a way to find a picture online. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a, a person... Um, near Pukekohe, who um, who said that he's got bats roosting under his veranda. And I was like, that, that can't be quite right. But um, he said that he, he was sweeping up the same, what he thought was mouse poo up every single day in the exact same spot. And it, he couldn't work it out why, but the, it was because he looked up and he saw um, that there was a bat up in the in the, in the the rafters of his veranda. Right. Uh, yeah. So... Um, that we named him uh, Brad the Bachelor Bat because he was all alone. <laughs> he didn't have any other friends. Um, but he, he came back, to, he left at night and he always came back to the exact same spot. Um, yes. Riparian planting is really important because uh, the um, bats use these streams and rivers as super highways to, to feed off and travel along. So having a really nice shaded stream where insect life can thrive is really really important so um, planting that with lots of natives if you've got a stream or, or river nearby that that's really really important pest control um, even in your small backyard is really important as well um, the just having a rat trap or a possum tim's trap in your backyard it can be a really vital thing if everyone in new zealand did that then i think we'd be um, really helping um our our picker picker as well um so here's me with uh, seven sharps caroline um she's um we're talking about um putting rat traps in one in every five backyards in, in the um in the devonport peninsula and so it's really important about um to do that around things like the compost heap over my shoulder there in the picture and yep. um, that that's really important to do those sort of things as well You can also become a bat spotter. So at Auckland Council, we have um, bat detectors available, not under uh, level 3.1 or whatever we're under now, but um, hopefully when we get to level two, we can uh, loan out these bat detectors.
but I've, I've heard from um, some people that the bat um, detector company over in the UK um, has um, been overwhelmed by orders from New Zealand. So that's great to hear. Um, oh, wow. It's going to be the perfect Christmas present for anyone uh, um, who, who can look for bats in their, in their backyard, um, in their school, park. And they especially love golf courses because there's obviously a lot of water there and, and big old trees. So, um, yeah, don't, don't um, disregard the golf course, the local golf course as well. Just about golf courses, only because I uh, have a bit of to do with golf courses. Is <laughs> just make sure you have permission first to go wandering, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> wandering across the golf course, especially if young people are listening. Uh, <laughs> just make sure you have permission to go on the golf course before you walk in front of somebody going four. Uh, yes, thank you. exactly. <laughs> oh, and prices of those. Have you got any idea? Do they come in varying prices? Does it start? At, can you get a can you get an entry level um, bat monitor? So this one is about uh, 70 pounds, which I think works to about to 130 New Zealand dollars. Um, wow. It's so not bad, but then you can go up and up and up to um, bigger ones and better ones that can plug into your your phone or your tablet and show all sorts of graphical details and do lots of recordings. And um, there's ones that have special microphones that we use um, that we can put in the forest and sit to record next to a stream and then come and pick up in the, in the next uh, two weeks or so. So um, these are the handheld basic ones, but, yeah, the, the sky's the limit with these bat detectors, and you can you can go more and more pro if, you, if you're that enthusiastic about bats. Um, Anna's just sent in a question, or well, more of a statement. She said it's so hard to find a bat detector even before lockdown. Uh, called the council doc, the forest and bird, and no one knew. Um, but I think... What you're talking about here is no one probably knew prior to winning Bird of the Year. That's right. Um, <laughs> it's now, councils are now going to find, well, actually, it's a great way to connect, particularly, you know, some of the young folk. And um, probably bat detectors will be on the uh, on the shopping list for some of yeah. these councils. Exactly. That's great. Um, oh, and, a, and a, have you got a contact or a website again for buying one? How, how would people... people if you Google Magnenta, um, which is the the brand there, you can see on the on the page there, Magenta, um, then um, you can um, definitely um, get those bat detectors, and they do some they're doing some express shipping to New Zealand, which is is great. Um, whether that'll get to us in time for Christmas, I don't know. It would be great. Yeah, fantastic. Actually, somebody too, somebody in uh, that's even watching this might know of um, maybe some that are in New Zealand. Who knows? Yeah, I've tried to find a, a New Zealand uh, manufacturer, but um, unfortunately we can't. So um, we, the UK one seemed to be just um, just right for the amateur bat detector. So I see someone's already posted the link there, which is great. Very clever. Yeah, great. And I guess the last and most important thing is that we really want people to talk to your friends about bats because like this little bat here is saying, um, the, the real prize of the bird of the year um, was that we learned about bats and, and, that, and then that's what it's really um, all about. So we want people to have more conversations, not just because of bird of the year. We want people to have um, conversations about um, bats all year round. So um, that's what we really want is making sure that you're having those conversations with your neighbours when they're, if they're chopping down that big old pine tree, if they're if you're thinking about um, doing some pest control, say you're doing it for the bats because you, you could be doing it for the bats and it'd be really cool if um, people were doing that sort of thing for, for bats as well. That's great. So I think that's all I've got. Um, and um, I'm hopeful that no one missed that too much of that because of my internet issues. I think we did pretty well. And actually, <laughs> if anyone notices, I didn't even go red as I was trying desperately hard to work out what the heck I was going to do. Um, let's just go through this page here. It's quite important for you because now being um, the representative, Ben, of uh, of our connection to understanding the bird of the year, which is the bat, um, this is a way we can get hold of you. That one at the bottom is very important, uh, yeah. which, is, <laughs> which is, do you just put no blushing scene? <laughs> Thanks very much, Jude. Um, is Ben Paris at AucklandCouncil.govt.nz. I've got a feeling you are very happy to take questions from anyone in New Zealand because you Absolutely. this is your thing. 
Yeah, I love talking about it. Yeah. Is there? Can I just ask before we go to the questions? So, so people, if um, if you've got questions, just flick them in that chat box. Um, and the wonderful folk uh, uh, from Predator Free New Zealand Trust right now are uh, copying them down and sending them to me on my phone so that I can um, send some of these through or ask Ben. But um, can you start off by, is there any questions you regularly get about bats that you can think of? Um, I guess there's a lot of questions that we don't know um, because there's not a lot of research done. But um, what we do know is about um, that bats are, are slow breeding. They only have one bat pup uh, per year. And um, so it does take them a while to, to breed, um, especially after um, pest control has been in and um, they've been, you know, it takes them a while to, but they really respond really well for after pest control. So um, some of the big um, operations down um, in Central North Island and down in Fiordland, um, bats are responding really well to, to pest control operations, which is great. Great. For those who have just joined us for um, and see that Ben's, we can't actually see Ben. It's just we have an issue with the internet. So uh, we're just hearing Ben um, and you have to put up with me. Um, <laughs> you got to look at something and it's moving and it's me today. Um, uh, getting quite a few questions about are cats an issue with bats? Yes, yes. Uh, unowned cats and feral, feral cats are, are very much a big issue. Um, we, we've seen um, there's a a very um, um, awful image of a, a cat that was caught down near Oakuni, which um, before it was caught um, went through about 70 short tail bats. Um, so these, these cats do just kill for the fun of it, not just for fun, um, not just for eating, I say, um, but um, they, yeah, it's really um, important that if you're, if you're, a, you're a cat owner, then you be a responsible cat owner and you do things like uh, microchipping and keeping a collar on and keeping your cat in at night, which is um, all really important um, ways to help um, help bats as well. Yeah, well explained. Um, here's one from Emily. Uh, what are the roles that Pika Pika play in our ecosystem? So um, Pika Pika Toro, the long tail bat, um, they play a really important role in insects, um, controlling insects. Um, overseas, um, there's been a lot of studies about um, bats in their agriculture areas and how they can um, reduce um, pest insects, but we haven't really done any um, research on that here. Um, but they do can, they do eat a lot of insects each night, which is really helpful for us, obviously. The short tail bat, the Pika Pika Toro Poto, is um, really, really important for pollination. And um, not only the Dactylanthus, which has a really important relationship with, uh, but it also um, where the Dactylanthus actually um, produces a mammalian hormone, um, which attracts the bats to it. Um, but obviously the um, mammalian hormone, um, it, uh, it attracts the rats and the possums as well. So it gets gobbled up by them instead of delicately pollinated by the bats. Um, but um, David Padamore's research has shown that uh, the short-tailed bat can actually pollinate uh, Pudukawa, um, Rirariwa, and other native flowers as well. So that's really important. It shows that um, we have some nocturnal pollinators as well that we just don't know about. And because short-tailed bats aren't found in many places on the mainland now because of the um, predation that they suffer from. Um, they, we obviously don't see those that full extent of the ecosystem service that short tail bats provide. Got a um, question here from George. Hello, George. Uh, we're not sure the age of George. Let us know, George. Um, uh, my neighbour has a big cypress tree untouched in the Waitakere's. Would there be a likelihood of having bats in there? Is the question especially around the Watakari Ranges. Uh, yes, there could be, a, yeah. a, 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 could be. Um, so we'd really encourage you to um, get a bat detector if you can and um, go looking for bats around that sort of area. If that big old tree is near a stream, near the Watakari Ranges, then it could be a, a really prime um, area for bats. 
George is 11 years old, isn't that great? Oh, and, nice question, George. And, yeah, good question, George. And if you, George, uh, if you want to in that box, just put in a sentence what you really love about bats, and I'll read it out. And I think that just brings me to that. I think what's happened here, Ben, with the winning bird of the year is that in the eyes of young kids, um, the presentation of this animal, in, you know, in front of them, so, you know, to win and then for them to really like bats, um, it's it's got to be good for the uh, for the kids, for the future generation. And the, uh, they just, they, they're happy that it's it's won, aren't they? Mm. Totally. Do you get lots of kids? Do you get lots of kids talking to you about bats, or do you think it's all on its way now after this? Oh no, I've, I always like getting the kids' questions because they ask such the most interesting questions. The best one I like is, um, "Do bats have eyelashes?" And I just didn't know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find out. You got to find out. <laughs> um, somebody asked earlier, just if you're planting and you're thinking bats. Even just, what would you suggest? What trees in particular? Um, if you're planting along stream, so your 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 colonizers, um, your primary um, species would be um, your, your cabbage trees, your manuka, kanuka, um, your flax, harakiki. Uh, so um, those are your primary species that you want along those sort of um, stream sides there. Um, depending on how wet or dry it is. Um, all year round so um but it's anything that will um get a lot of um, insect life back into the streams because a lot of the time those streams are quite exposed um, especially in rural landscapes so by planting them up um, it shades them over so more insect life is produced and the, these bats can scoop up these insects um, all night long um i got a good question here oh well, jim actually makes a statement he said he's from the wider rapper and he says Thank you, Jim, for, for being part of this. He says we are looking for both species in our region, and we started last year. Um, Good on you, Jim. What do you, yeah, what do you say to Jim, though? Uh, Wild rapper, um, just as is there likelihood of uh, bats being there in, in numbers? Um, there's, we know that there's um, short tail bats in the Tararua ranges. Um, so, it, and I think they found um, bats, long tail bats. At the, on the on the back of uh, Mount Bruce Pukaha recently as well, so um, definitely um, it's worth looking for those these bats because they seem to pop up in the, the strangest places. I mean, I wouldn't think of um, bats near in a rural landscape like near Pukekohe, like where we found this, these bats um, in Auckland. But um, you know, they, they pop up in the most surprising places, so um, definitely worth having a look. And don't just look once and be disappointed. Yeah, keep, keep up the effort. So well done, Jim. Nari writes, I teach the local school, uh, Oriwa, uh, Hatfield Beach area. Are there Pekka Pekka in this area her class is interested? Um, we've found bats around um, Dairy Flat, which is near Oriro. Um, so, yeah, we and there's definitely um, been some anecdotal sightings of, of bats um, further up towards wide area as well so um and definitely a lot of bats um up towards walkworth as well so um the more we seem to look for them the more we find but um mm. we can't be everywhere so that's why we want, want to create this sort of citizen science bat army out there looking for bats uh, rick said he's found them in a small uh one hectare stand of kahakatiya in the middle of the hauraki plains near pyro oh good on you rick isn't this great? Rick's good. Out, yeah, that's great. Um, uh, Waikato River have them, Donna says. And uh, from Jim, he's come back actually saying we found good numbers of long tail and uh, and we'll look for short tailed in the Tauruas that went missing in 2017. You know, um, isn't it great? This is this. Um, it, it's just so interesting for folk to take on and find them for you. This is what you want, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we can't be everywhere, but um, we, we definitely want to, and we're working on a, uh, a website where we can hopefully lodge uh, people's sightings because um, we're hopeful that um, we can work with the Department of Conservation on this to make sure that people can um, find the, the these places and then we can um, use computer modelling um, to sort of predict where places that they might be 
found if it's if it's under the same sort of conditions such as the forest type or the nearest stream and things like that so with new technology we can hopefully find um, better ways of finding them as well um i see also um one of our people's asking uh fiordland um i mean that's such a huge area and there's so much uh, to investigate down there but uh are there um bats in that area for you Yes, yes. So it's beyond a huge stronghold for our both our long tail bat and short tail bat. Um, I was lucky enough to be down in Fiordland for the Australasian Bat Society conference in March last year, just before this pandemic hit, um, and uh, we were catching uh, short tail bats um, with the um, Colin O'Donnell, the the bat guru down there, and um, so that was really a special experience to be able to um see these these really rare bats in the hand george wants to know he's right into it today aren't you george um do bats mainly live in the trunk of the tree or near the tops um so they can be anywhere actually um some of our researchers um at ecoquest and the hanua ranges uh found um bats uh, quite low down within within eye level of of um of the and the and the trees there and just a small cavity there um but um they could be anywhere from it depends on where the, that cavity or the loose bark is they can be anywhere within that tree um ben uh aruru known to be a natural predator of bats absolutely yes yes before um the introduced predators came along ruru was the and the laughing owl would probably be the um other extinct one owl that we had um would be the um the natural predators of our of our, our picker picker and I've, I've seen some when we did bat walks down at the, uh, the waikato river down in hamilton with the waikato museum uh the uh, we often saw some uh ruru doing some aerial acrobatics trying to catch these bats on the wing and it was very very impressive um alan uh it asks um, a pretty straightforward question. Uh, do bats like seawater? We don't know a lot about uh, bats over how if they'll cross um, sea. We, we, we know that they're, for instance, in, in Auckland, um, we know they're in the Watakari Ranges, but with the, the, the fly across the Monaco Harbour across to a Fiji Peninsula, we, we don't know um, what what they do there. But we, we, we know that they usually travel across landscapes looking for food so i guess it depends on um where that they're, they're doing that but we we really want to find out more about these bats to see how they travel um with the travel across sea with it how far they'll travel across um large paddocks for instance um we, we, we there's a lot of information we still don't know about them karen asks i currently do pest control near the mangamangaroa reserve uh, is there a possibility of bats here? Oh, well, um, my my main friend, um, Ethan from Pest Free Howick, um, has been taking some students there to, to look for bats. Um, he's a conservation assistant there at Pest Free Howick, and he, um, he's looked for bats a couple of times among the Mangaroa and um, hasn't had any luck yet, but he's, he's still very keen, so... Um, if you if you want to to go on one of Ethan's bat walks, do get in touch with um, Ethan at Pest Free Howick. Thomas asks, can you see bats flying at dusk? And that is a bit like what you see regularly when you're visiting places like Fiji or Australia. Um, yes, except our bats are much much smaller, so it's uh, harder to see those these little bats um, compared to the flying hmm. foxes we might see over in the islands or Australia. Um, but you do see these bats um, just on dusk. Um, when the sky is turning that purpley colour um, is, is the perfect time. Just just above the tree line, you can sometimes see the bats darting about, catching the, the first insects as they um, come out of their roost. Um, and and that's, they sort of fly a bit like a swallow or a fantail, quite erratically darting about, catching little insects. So it's, it's really impressive to see them. And um, often on our bat walks in the Waitakere Ranges, uh, we see the bats as well as hear them, which is really amazing. Oh, yeah, that must be fantastic. Um, I think somebody just asked, um, how can you, how do you know a bat is pregnant? Some um, fascinating questions coming down. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
you can tell that um, obviously with the, if it's a slightly uh, more rotund bat, um, but um, right. you can also look at um, whether that um, that female has bred before by the um, the nipples as well on the bat. So um, yeah, we when we catch the bats um, for research purposes. Um, we can often look at whether this bat has, is pregnant or whether it has been pregnant in the past. Um, so that's really important to sort of find out um, things about whether the population is breeding. Um, Dawn asked, uh, why do they change roosts so much? And it said, sorry, if it's already been asked. But uh, she came in late and she's very curious. Uh, we think it's something to do with um, changing roost trees so that there's not a build-up of parasites in the tree. Um, that um, that they don't, yeah, that it doesn't build up so much with so much uh, guano in there that um, that the parasites might come up. So um, they do roost, switch roosts every couple of days, which is um, it's great for bats, but not so much for researchers. Um, which is it's really means a really hard study, but um, there's been a lot of research down in Fiordland again, um, which is a stronghold for bats, um, about um, what makes a good roost tree and why they go go to certain roost trees. So they might come back to a certain roost tree um, at a certain time of the year, for instance. So we might think that think about um, the thermal dynamics, for instance, how um, how it heats up during the day. Um, and then it gets to its peak intensity um, during the afternoon, so they're nice and warmed up for the evening. So it, there's still a lot we need to know about these bats um, and why they choose their roost trees. Catherine asks, are there any captive populations in New Zealand? And if not, why? So this is another, goes on from another question that I often get asked is why can't we just move the bats? Um, and that, um, that's because we've tried uh, to move short tail bats um, a, a couple of attempts anyway. And um, down in um, off the coast of um, Stewart Island, I moved from, I think, over the codfish or the other way around. And um, the bats actually flew back before the researchers got back. Uh, so um, that didn't work out so well for them. And then another attempt that I was involved with um, down at Pukaha, Mount Bruce, um, they caught bats from the Tarara Ranges. They raised the bats in captivity um, and um, until the bat mums had pups and they released the mums back in the Tararuas and took the pups across to Kapiti Island uh, where they actually um, survived there for quite, for quite a few months until they got some sort of um, weird ear disease that meant they uh, the researchers had to amputate some of their ears, which is... Um, when bats um, produce echolocation to find their food, they catch that information in the ears. So to have a bit of your ears been amputated is uh, not ideal for these bats. So they got evacuated to uh, Auckland Zoo, where, where they survived and bred um, there for a few years. Um, but unfortunately, um, yeah, bats don't survive so well in captivity in the long term. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's no bats currently in captivity um, in New Zealand. That's great. You've done so well, Ben. I think we both have really big technical <laughs> problems in the middle, uh, but we just soldiered on. Um, uh, oh, here's one. Just our final question just came through from Zoe. Can we suggest a specific place to detect or see bats around Auckland Central area? Um, this is from Zoe because uh, she wants to try out her new bat detector. Oh, awesome. Awesome! I love it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. that's right. So you, she wants to she wants to know where they are first, so she can just go there and go beep beep. Got it. There it is. So where oh. would you suggest if you've got one to try? We haven't found any bats in the Auckland Central suburbs, but um, another friend, uh, Paul from Urban Arc, um, he is um, he took bat walks um, last summer along Oakley Creek um, in Waterview there. Um, to, to look for bats there, and it, it was alongside one of the golf courses there as well. Um, we were also keen to look um, through the Auckland Domain, where there's lots of big old trees there. Um, but I don't know if many people have looked there, so um, definitely try to stick to those three things, which are the big old trees, near open areas, and near streams, and hopefully you might find bats there. Thanks, Ben.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you for um, uh, being part of this web uh, webinar today. And it was uh, a unique one with uh, normally we see the person that's talking today. We just know it's Ben Paris because of the name right there uh, in the box beside mine. Um, so, Ben, we thank you heaps. And um, also congratulations once more uh, for the bat winning bird of the year. I imagine that you'll be needing more staff soon um, because <laughs> of the recognition internationally. Well, I, ho I hope that it really raises the profile of our bats a bit more so that we can, uh, yeah, really hopefully we get more inspiring the next generation too of, of bat researchers as well. No trouble. Thank you. And uh, I'll put on the screen there just ways that you can get hold of Ben, um, even if you detect uh, you know, a bat that you think no one else has ever detected in that area before. I'm sure Ben would love to know. Good luck, everybody. Thanks very much to the Predator Free New Zealand Trust for putting these on and getting it all connected up. Uh, and we will be putting this recording or the recording of this, whatever shape or form it will actually look like, but at least it will, I'll do a bit of editing and it will, uh, it will have all the information that some of you have just heard. And then you can send the link off to others that may have missed our webinar today so they can be informed too. Um, good luck and, um, uh, well, happy build up to Christmas. Where are you going for your holidays, Ben? Somewhere where the bats are? <laughs> I don't know if I'll be going anywhere at the moment, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. And those are locked down. Just hang in there, everybody. And uh, everybody keep safe. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you for joining. Bye.